the challenges for the future are how we can improve recognition by not just social services but health and employment services for the needs of adults with autism and really I think especially those who are more able. These are the people uh, who could be most productive in, in, in society and who actually get the least help of all. Um, we need to uh, give more support for accommodation and removing the pressure on parents, these hidden carers who are doing a great job, but what will happen when they're no longer around um, you know, is, is a huge worry. And we do need to try and improve our ways of, of enhancing social skills and providing for people's emotional needs and really asking ourselves how we can create more ASD-friendly environments. And the other issue, I mean, the government's gone on a lot about joined up services, but actually things aren't very well joined up and we need to get much more uh, better uh, cooperation between uh, health services, social services and mental health needs. Because I think in many ways we really need to focus on changing other people's understanding and behaviour just as much as we try and change the individual with, with autism. We also need to change our images of autism and clearly the NAS have had a big campaign recently about thinking differently about autism because autism isn't just charming little blue-eyed children um, or even um, skilled adolescents or the sort of uh, Rain Man type of figures. Autism is also uh, lonely and elderly individuals uh, who are going to need a lot of support and we really do need programmes throughout the lifespan. Um, I think it's fair to say that care for children with autism has improved immeasurably over the decades and I've been around a long time and it was not uncommon when I started for behavioural programmes to use things like electric shock for uh, kids with challenging behaviours. Um, unfortunately that doesn't go on anymore, the kid isn't screaming because he's being shocked, the shock is because he's screaming and upset. Um, so we, things have improved there, but we really do need to do much more for adults um, and especially older adults. So we've moved away from a time when they all lived in, you know, just ended up their days in institutions. But what we don't want is people just living on the streets because of a lack of support. And finally, I'd just like to make the issue, the, um, raise the issue of funding. The situation now, certainly in terms of research funding, is that it's all going in mostly to the first uh, five or six years of life. A huge amount of work on diagnosis, early intervention, which of course is great, but the amount of money available uh, just goes down and down. And really, uh, people live, uh, people are adults with autism much, much longer than they are children with autism. So it's really getting a much more equitable um, uh, funding regime across the whole lifespan. Um, and you know, focusing on, on little children is fine, but it, it's really making sure this focus persists throughout life uh, that really is going to improve the quality of people's lives um, um, as, as they move into old age. So thank you.